Hi, I'm Lori Hodson, and I started Scientology when I was 13 years old. I was in Scientology for over 30 years, but I never dreamed it would destroy my family and I would lose my children. I would have never joined Scientology. They screamed at her, and what they did with her fiancé in Mexico, I knew, I was like, what? And she goes, but don't, I'm not supposed to tell you, Mom. I'm not supposed to tell you, please don't tell anyone. And I thought, oh my God, this is like, so I did, I told my mom, and I was like, this isn't right. I mean, this is the elite clergy yelling at my child because she wants to come home. I mean, I thought you treat others how you want to be treated. That's what we were taught in Scientology. You don't do that. You, you use good affinity and reality of communication. You don't yell at someone and make them wash dishes for a month. Hi, my name is Beth Alquist and I've been Lori's friend for 30 years. And I've watched and witnessed Lori go through um, what Scientology has done to her. Beth, you're a born-again Christian. From a Christian perspective, what do you think about everything the Church of Scientology did to your best friend Lori? I think it's completely evil. Um, I don't understand how any church could treat any of their members in this method and, and the fair game. In, in my church, if I don't want to go there, I leave. Okay, they'll miss me, but they're not going to stop me. They're not going to threaten me. They're not going to bill me for anything. It, you can leave. <laughs> you leave, and um, they may call you. They may say, we miss you. Um, how are things going? Uh, you'll always have the friends that you have there. They'll always talk to you. They'll actually probably re reach out and get you to come back. But if you don't want to, it's fine. And even if I decide to change churches because my church is not meeting my needs, I can go to another church. And you actually sometimes find people in other churches that have gone from your church to their church. You know, you're switching churches. That's the last time I saw my kids. So, I'm sorry, it's just hard. I really miss them. I just can't wrap my brain around it. And I don't understand how um, they could hurt Lori um, in the way that they have done by taking her kids because she doesn't agree with them. So another great point um, about being a Christian in my church as a single mom with uh, my three kids is if I can't pay rent, they pay rent for me. Lori has received checks from my church to help me pay rent. Um, they give me food cards um, to help me out to buy food for my children. Um, I don't get a bill in the mail saying, okay, you owe that money back. I mean, they are completely supportive of me as a single parent, and that is not a bad thing to be um, broke. As I guess I understand in the Scientology Church, I would be a low life, um, as I've been learning about it. Um, so they're just very supportive. I've had um, Christmases covered. I mean, they have gone out of their way to buy tons of gifts for me and my kids. So my mom and I formally resigned on August 30th, 2010. We wrote a letter, Dear Scientology, we are formally resigning from the Church of Scientology. We want nothing more to do with it. Beth, how did, how did you learn that Lori had been disconnected from the Church of Scientology, declared an SP? It was a really kind of slow and secretive process. Um, I, I knew something was going on with their kids because I could text her and she say, I can't talk right now. We've got an upset going on. And I was like, what's the upset? So they're forced, they're, they're like, they're going to lose their dad or they disconnect from their mom. They're going to lose one of us. Um, I could tell that something was really, really wrong, but she wasn't going to share with me. And here I'm her best friend. And so I wouldn't pressure, I didn't push her. Um, and then I think I found out that she finally, it was months after that she signed the, the re resignation letter, that then she finally told me that she left um, the Church of Scientology. And then she told me, I think it was even later, that um, now her kids aren't talking to her. 
and that they have disconnected from her. So it was a very slow, secretive process, like she couldn't tell me. And I thought, you know, in the end, I thought, I'm your best friend. You know, but this is what they do to them, I guess, is that you can't talk, you can't share these things. What kind of toll did you see disconnection take on Lori and... Hmm. Well, I, I moved in with Lori, so she had two empty bedrooms, and I was in a situation where I needed somewhere to go. So I took over Jessica's bedroom, and my kids took over another bedroom, and this is her family home and where she had lots of memories with her children. I mean, growing up, they were, what, up to 18 and 20 something years old, doing all their holidays here, and um, she hated being in the house. It was not a happy place. Um, at the same time, she now had a house in Clear Lake, which is where she'd rather be, because there was no terrible memories. Uh, I know there's a lot of sleepless nights, um, I sometimes find her out on the couch um, and not in bed where she should be sleeping. Um, and so I knew there was a lot of, uh, there was tears, but it was like, uh, I think in Scientology they train them not to show those tears. And I told her over and over, let them go, let the tears go. Um, you, need to, you need to let that happen. That's your, I used to tell her, you're a human being and those are your feelings, and you are emotional, let them go. There's no shame in that. Beth, as a Christian, the Bible teaches you about the unconditional love of God. Mm -hmm. When you compare that with the Church of Scientology, what do you see? Oh, my gosh. Everything is based on conditions. If you do what we say, then you're in good graces with us. Um, if you slip up, flub up, in, in any kind of form, then they're out to get you. Um, and, which is funny, I've talked about this, is unconditional love is really hard as a human being. Um, and it's something that um, I, I try to practice all the time. But it's funny is how um, unconditional love from a church you think would be really easy. Uh, but it's not there, and uh, I struggled with that myself, but how could a church do that? How could a church ruin you, ruin you? Will the circle be